Last year, standing in this circle, I reported how an extract from an Australian native plant had the ability to 100% kill the Zika virus, a virus which causes severe deformities in unborn children. And it did so with no damage or toxic effects to the primate cells used in the experiments. Now, after seeing these incredible results, I immediately thought, what's next? Could we achieve the same results with other viruses similar to Zika? The Zika virus is a member of the Flaviviridae family, which encompasses numerous viruses. One of the most well-known members of this family is the dengue virus. Like Zika, there is no treatment for dengue. And current estimates indicate that 2.6 billion people in over 128 countries, that's 40% of the world's population are at risk of infection. Now, incredibly, each year, 390 million new infections of dengue fever occur worldwide. Of these, 500,000 go on to develop hemorrhagic fever, the more severe form of the disease. And this results in up to 25,000 deaths annually, the majority of whom are children. Now, our goal was to see if we could kill the dengue virus as we had Zika. We tested the same plant extract that had successfully killed the Zika virus against all four serotypes, or rather the different strains of the dengue virus. This is an immunofocus assay. Now put simply, it's a way of determining how many infectious virus particles there are in a sample of something. Now in each individual well, we have added our primate cells across both testing trays or plates. Down the plate, we have different concentrations of the dengue virus ranging from highest to lowest. Now here, you can see this is our virus-only control in which the virus appears as the dark spots. Next, we have our extract-only control, meaning that only our plant extract has been added to the cells. And we do this as a way to ensure that the experiment is running properly. Here we have our primate cells that have been infected with the dengue virus, and our plant extract has been added at either 24, 48, or 72 hours post-infection. As you can clearly see, there are no dark spots anywhere in any of the cells, thus indicating we have 100% killed the dengue virus. Now, further testing has also confirmed that we can kill the virus both inside and outside the cell. And this means we have 100% total clearance of the virus. Now, this is a significant result as no therapies tested against these viruses prior to now have the ability to kill all of the virus within and external to the cell. Thank you. Now, these two images I have shown you were just a mere snapshot of the total work that was undertaken. We tested all four serotypes of the dengue virus, and we did so at numerous time points to allow the virus to fully replicate and infect the cells. Now, this means that 
no matter when we added our plant extract, it still killed the virus, thus providing us a true indication as to the effectiveness of our plant extract at eliminating the virus. Now, regardless of what time point we tested, the results were exactly the same for all four serotypes of the virus. We achieved zero dengue. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> we have also gone on and tested our plant extract against the Kunjum virus the Australian variant of the West Nile virus and another member of the Flaviviridae family. Now, like the Zika and dengue viruses, we can 100% kill and clear that virus too with zero adverse effects. <laughs> now, to date, we have identified the novel compound from our plant extract responsible for killing these viruses. Our next step is to complete all of the preclinical testing before progressing through to human clinical trials, which we envisage will commence by 2020. Now, current figures indicate that nine billion US dollars are spent globally every year on the treatment and management of dengue alone. Now, all going well, in the not too distant future, we will have the ability to prevent all of this. And at the heart of that achievement will be an Australian native plant. <laughs> Now, as a modern society, many of us have been raised to believe in and covet the beauty of foreign, especially European, introduced plants. For example, the humble rose over our own native flora. What's not to love about a rose? But perhaps next time you look at an Australian native plant, you might like to consider what power is hidden within and what disease or ailment this plant may hold the cure for. After all, there is still so much more that Mother Nature is yet to reveal. Thank you.